The film Prancer was shot in several locations around Michiana in 1988 and 89. Director John Hancock, who'd spent summers at an orchard near Three Oaks for much of his boyhood, strategized to influence producer Rafaela De Laurentiis' choice of filming sites. I showed it last and it worked very well. She fell in love with the place and decided to do it here. They liked it, being quaint and dating back to, say, the 1950s, where it hasn't changed since then. Brian Volstorff was Three Oaks mayor and dubbed himself the village film commissioner at the time. It doesn't have all the aluminum siding buildings and flashy neon signs. So they just sort of fell in love with Three Oaks. The village made such an impression on producer De Laurentiis that she not only chose Three Oaks over nearby Laporte, but also wrote village officials to say the name of the town in the script, Fall River, was being changed to Three Oaks. Now Dasher, now Dancer! John Hancock was delighted to direct his seventh feature film on familiar ground. Dancer! I know the locations, I know how they are in different lights, different seasons. I mean, what a thrill for me, having grown up here, you know, fat little boy falls off his bicycle, hurts his knee, and now I'm the boss. The area, by and large, was happy to host Hancock's movie making. People made buttons that said, Three Oaks, film capital of southwest Michigan, and they put them on their coats. Allison Payne had a small role in the film, looking at Prancer in a cage by Dreyer's meat market. Lots of local folks got work as extras. Casting calls drew hundreds to Laporte's Kessling Middle School and other sites. Casting director Susan Willette welcomed the throngs with a letter pointing out that extras were of maximum importance to a film, though paid only minimum wage, $3.35 an hour at the time. Allison has fond memories of the movie making, though she was initially suspicious when told she got a part. My mom showed up to take me out of school and I thought that she was trying to trick me into going to the doctor because I really hated the doctor. The film's stars began to be seen regularly around town, Sam Elliott particularly. He didn't seem to be bothered by the throngs of women asking him for their autograph. Everybody was totally hot for Sam Elliott. They thought he was so rugged. Sam Elliott, for instance, I think was the nicest of the bunch, and he was just like a good old boy. Elliott's wife, Catherine Ross, a glamorous actress in her own right, was with her husband, but that did not stop the swooning. Well, he was staying for the first part of the shoot in the Holiday Inn in Laporte, and they were lined up in the hallway, hoping, you know. He had to, to move to a house out in the country. Actor Michael Constantine, who played the shopping mall Santa who spreads Rebecca's story to the local newspaper, was also happy to chat up local residents. And so was Abe Vigoda, who played the town veterinarian. But while the biggest name in the cast loved hamming it up for the cameras, off camera... Lois Leachman was very aloof. When she was not filming, she went to her trailer, and she did not stay around to talk to anybody. And everybody was saying, stay away from her, stay away from her, stay away from her, because she's so... Harley. One press account had Leachman asking after a take where her boots were. Over there, she was told, but my feet, she replied, are over here. The young star of the film, nine-year-old Rebecca Harrell, who as an adult became a film director herself, was shepherded around town by her mother Ray, a theater teacher back home in Vermont. I felt right at home in Three Oaks and all of those places. Rebecca says she had fun on the set of her first movie and even made a little extra money from a swear jar. Every time Sam Elliott or Raffaella de Laurentiis would swear, I would make them, it's, first I started them off at a dime, and then I increased my rates up to 25 cents. Hancock admits his vocabulary gets salty on set. In this Christmas fable, much of his profanity was directed at the reindeer playing Prancer. Housed at a horse farm in Galeen, the reindeer were a handful on set. You know, reindeers, uh, they're, they're borderline untrainable. In scenes where Prancer is moved by truck, handlers had to lie on the truck bed, restraining the animal from jumping out. Getting a reindeer to move required a game of peekaboo. If you place a reindeer off camera and cover it with a, a grip flag, and then suddenly uncover it, the on-camera reindeer will go 
and want to get to it. Allison Payne says food helped handlers keep the reindeer calm in its cage in her scene. They fed him bananas to kind of keep him happy. Reindeer recalcitrance ruined more than a few takes. I mean, the crew wanted to eat the reindeer for the wrap party, but that was frowned upon. The crew was also bedeviled by snow, or lack of it. The National Weather Service says in a normal January, the area gets about 16 inches. But in January 1989, only 1.3 inches fell on the Three Oaks area. I know it was terribly cold, but it was not snowy. So they made snow every single morning. Crews mounted cotton batting on rooftops to simulate heavy snow. They sprayed a substance called carcinol, a white foam usually used to coat airport runways when planes have to make emergency landings on the streets. It was kind of gooey. I don't know, I was just like captivated by it and I really wanted to touch it. My mom said, no, don't touch that. And, and I did touch it and it got all over my snowsuit. I was disciplined for getting dirty in the suit that I was supposed to be wearing for the movie. And when snowflakes had to fall... We would blow potato flakes up into the air with big fans and let it drift down into the scene. You have to clean up the potato flakes if you use them on the street because birds eat them and they swell in their stomachs and it's not good. Huge time and expense went into recreating winter in a usually snowy part of Michigan. And I thought, well, uh, that's sort of phony, but when you get into the movie, it looks just totally real. It was amazing. Finally, significant snow fell on Three Oaks in early February, in time for a major scene at the Methodist Church. You have added inspiration to my day, young lady. Three Oaks is in good hands. As long as we have children like Jessica Riggs. The scene inside the church, where the pastor talks about Rebecca's Christmas spirit, was a marathon. We stayed up all night filming that scene in the church. I just remember being so happy. I remember being down in the basement and there was cookies. And I remember I even fell asleep on the floor underneath a table at one point in that church. But for choir members like Eleanor Desmond, it was a long night. We sang and they'd stop us and then we'd sing and then, you know, then they would stop us. They did not use our choir they used a dubbed-in professional you know, group. <laughs> Hollywood spectacle often brought big crowds to the Prancer set and a sense of excitement for residents. I'm not going to just go home, eat supper, watch TV. I can go down and be part of this movie, and people were really getting excited about it. My husband, at about 11 o'clock after the news, Every night he walked downtown to see what was going on. And I'd be in my warm bed, you know, and he'd come back freezing cold and give me reports of what was going on. Some cold and snowy outdoor scenes were actually shot indoors, inside an industrial building near Laporte. We built the street in Three Oaks in the warehouse over in Panola. We had a huge construction department. We had a huge art department. And the nighttime aerial view of town, the closing shot in the movie, featured a model covered in flour, crafted over several weeks by local miniaturist Don Bowman. It was later displayed at local museums, but the movie makers did turn down another proposed special effect. That was brought up during, prior to the movie being filmed, that. What if we want to blow up a building or do something? I said, well, we got the old featherbone thing here. News accounts say Volstorf, as mayor, thought blowing up the old Warren Featherbone factory building would save the cost of demolishing it later to make way for redevelopment. Since the factory was later part of Three Oaks' preservation-fueled economic revival, it's fortunate his suggestion was declined. Filming wrapped up when spring arrived, and after months of editing, even crafting a new ending, John Hancock brought Prancer to a Laporte Mall multiplex for a gala premiere showing, a somewhat chatty showing. We sat in the theater and people were going, oh, look, there's so-and-so, oh, look, there's this, you know. Where are you going? 
The finished film contained some surprises. The cinematic Three Oaks had mountains and a newspaper called the Herald Argus, actually the name of Laporte's paper. Popular butcher Ed Dreyer was renamed Herb and was kind of a bad guy. I saved his life. Now he's my best salesman. <laughs> Aren't you, fella? Film reviews were mixed. Sometime Harbert resident Roger Ebert gave it a thumbs up, and other critics found a lot to like. Though the USA Today reviewer complained that it trafficked in respectably dull sincerity, and the New York Times thought it went too heavy on the magic Christmas dust. You didn't have to explain. John Hancock enjoyed movie making in his backyard so much he made several other films in Michiana. In Farewell, the Prancer cast and crew wrote their thanks to Three Oaks on a copy of the 124-page script. <music> Filmmakers had given parts of the village a fresh coat of paint and given the whole area, mired in an economic slump, a morale boost. A columnist in the Galeen River Gazette said of the filmmaking, what this signals is the fact that this little village has plenty going for it. I know that right now it looks like the pits in some spots, but that's changing. Three Oaks merchants noticed a burst of cinematic fame. A lot of people coming to Three Oaks because of the movie. They would come and they were shopping, but they also wanted to know where was it filmed and where did they do this and where did they do that. Decades later, lots of Three Oaks residents still enjoy leafing through Prancer scrapbooks. in the winter when holiday decorations stayed up for months. They may hang a Prancer ornament on the tree and perhaps don Prancer sweatshirts to watch the movie when Christmas draws near. Bye, Prancer. Goodbye. <laughs>